Hi there, and welcome to Local 4 Plus. I'm Christy McDonald, so happy to have you with me. We are taking a closer look at a series we did here on Local 4 about falls. We're calling it Balancing Act. And joining me right now is a senior medical producer, Sarah Mayberry. Hey, Sarah, it's good to have you with me. And also, of course, our, our local ER doc and resident medical expert, Dr. Frank McGeorge. Thanks. It's good to see both of you. I love this series that you did. And Sarah, why don't you go ahead and just give us an idea of why you even wanted to do something on falls and falling. Well, fall, one in four older Americans will fall every year. Okay. And falls are the number one cause of injuries and injury deaths in seniors too. So it's a huge problem. But unlike most medical problems that are difficult to prevent or impossible to prevent, falls are highly preventable. There's so many choices we make in our everyday lives that either raise or lower our risk of falling. And so we thought this would be a great opportunity to highlight that. And just, I know personally, my husband's family has lost several loved ones to falls. And my mom actually had a coworker who was just 40 years old who oh, died goodness. after falling down her basement stairs. So this is something we just need to pay so much more attention to. Yeah, we don't usually hear a lot about it. And you are the one that sees people mm -hmm. then in the ER. And this can be very difficult to recover from. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, in fact, there's a recent paper that came out that shows that falls have doubled in people over 60 in the last 20 years. So there's been a significant increase. And a lot of that is because people are surviving illnesses that they normally wouldn't have 20 years ago. People are on medications mm -hmm. now that might make them more likely to become dizzy. Um, and then falls in general in society are a high risk proposition. And in the emergency department, I see not just accidents from in younger people, but I see falls in older people that are not only 100% preventable, but ultimately, as you point out, lead to significant declines in their overall well-being and health. And some of them can actually be declines that lead ultimately in some ways to death. I mean, the thing that we most commonly fear are something like hip fractures. Those can lead to prolonged disability periods, prolonged hospital and in nursing home or long-term care facility stays, and ultimately, again, lead to you know, long-term disability and morbidity. But the other thing to point out are mm -hmm. falls lead to head injuries. Falls lead to other more serious trauma in older people outside of just ordinary fractures. So the bottom line is falls are completely preventable serious injuries that can lead to long-term wounds. And we have a really a first-hand account of a couple who tell their story. Let's go ahead and take a look. Bob and Sue Schaefer were enjoying the last day of a wonderful trip to Australia when their fun came to a sudden crashing halt on a Melbourne trolley car. It was a very full trolley car. It was standing room only. The couple was separated in the crowd. At their stop, Sue got off first. But I was keeping an eye out of the door over there, keeping an eye on Sue to figure out where she was going because I didn't know where we were going. I forgot that there was a step in the car. And I have this image stuck in my head of me flying forward like Superman. Then soon I was on the floor with my knee making first impact. I heard a lot of commotion and I turned around and looked and he was on the floor. It was very confusing and great pain and uh, embarrassed. Bob briefly lost consciousness. I was very worried. He did start responding to me a little while afterwards. That made me feel better. Bob spent the night in the hospital. Then the couple had to scramble to make their flight home. The airlines arranged for a wheelchair, but it was a long journey to Michigan. We had a 13 hour flight, then we had a three hour flight, then we had a two hour flight. Back home, the pain was intense and Bob soon underwent surgery. Tendons were not as attached as they should have been. So they had to pull those back together and reattach them. So I'll be in this brace for several weeks. In spite of that, Bob considers himself lucky. After this happened, I got to thinking, gosh, I've known several people who've had very serious falls. People who were about our age. Uh, a lady friend of ours fell down, broke her um, broke her femur. An old college friend of mine fell down on his front steps and he hit his head and unfortunately passed away not long after that. Bob took to Facebook to share his story and the statistics he wants everyone to know. Falls are the single biggest cause of injury and injury death to people over 65. 36,000 people will die from falls this year. Uh, it costs millions and millions of dollars in the healthcare system, and most of it's preventable. 
Bob is a pilot and self-proclaimed safety evangelist. He says his accident shows it only takes a momentary lapse to result in a fall. In my case, I lost situational awareness of what I was doing. If you mess up, fess up so that everybody can learn. So uh, I messed up. I wasn't paying attention. I fell down. I hurt myself. So what's the lesson we can learn out of this? Well, pay attention. If there's a handhold, use it. Be aware of the hazards of falls and try and address those hazards. And there's lots of things we can do for fall prevention, but the single biggest thing is be aware that that's a hazard. And especially if you are an American of a certain age, know that the numbers are stacking up against you. There's our safety lesson for the day. <laughs> and soon Bob seems so healthy and active, and sometimes it feels like we don't even have falls on our radar. When should we even start thinking about it or, or worrying about it? Well, you know, everybody, of course, should always be aware of falls, but certainly, you know, once we get older, the risk and the danger of a fall become much more significant. And that's really, I think, the thing. People underestimate the risk of falls, even in common circumstances like your home. I mean, mm -hmm. if you think about it, most accidents, you know, car accidents, for example, happen where you are most often, your own neighborhood. Well, where are you most often as an older adult? Your in home. your home. Yep. And that's why surveying your home for fall hazards is really, really important. And it's something that we encourage every older adult to do, whether it's be by yourself going through a checklist or perhaps even getting a physical or occupational therapist out to survey your home and actually look for things. And so we did a specific story where we went out to an individual's home with a physical therapist who went through room by room to look for fall hazards that were correctable and hopefully help him identify things that will keep him from falling because unfortunately he had already suffered a fall at home. Yeah, that critical eye with someone from that different perspective really can make a difference. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Fred Barnard, now 80, is a retired volunteer Troy firefighter. In 30 years of fighting fires, he never broke a bone until recently when his dog Max startled him awake. And, and, and I jumped up to take the dog out to the bathroom because he was yipping away. I just jumped up, put my pants on, but then I fell sideways and fell on my arm and I broke my arm across here. Didn't break apart, just cracked. And then my shoulder barely cracked that too. Although this was the first time he's broken a bone, it's not his first fall. I fell in the bathroom, I fell in the bedroom several times. You know, it's kind of scary when you fall because it, it takes a while to recover because you, you wake up and it's like, w where am I? What's going on? You know, if it's a safe one. Sarah Arena is a Henry Ford Health physical therapist and recommends, especially for people who have had a fall, an evaluation of the home. The physical therapist can then be in the home and give very individualized approach to hopefully prevent the fall from even occurring. And today, Fred is letting us look at his home, starting with how he enters. Coming in the home, we all enter from different ways, right? And we get kind of in a habit of how we do that. So in this case, this individual enters and exits through their garage, which is a really safe place if it's available because ice and snow don't accumulate generally in those areas. So usually the floors aren't as slippery. She did have a couple of suggestions. First, highlight any lips or raised steps with some tape. Also, I might recommend they put some type of a grab bar here, maybe on the wall or kind of up and down around this area, again, through the studs. Sometimes I've even seen people put them in the frame of the door here just to give them a little something secure to pull up on. Moving inside to the living room, the first thing she draws attention to is the rug. And, you know, obviously this is a rug that if you're in the middle of it, you might not have an issue unless perhaps you use a walker and then that could cause some friction for a fall. The other thing about this specific rug would be the edges. Um, so if, for example, you're walking, you might trip over mm -hmm. top of that. And Her that suggestion is to either get rid of the rug, choose a thinner one with less pile, or carpet wall to wall. It's also important to remove any clutter or trip hazards where people might walk. In this case, that's Max's bed. And don't forget pet toys and even pets themselves. Pets are actually a very big concern, right? There is actually some data to show that pets are a cause of falls amongst older adults. Ideally, pets should be trained to stay next to you, not in front or behind you. Finally, consider lighting. The recommendation is 75 watt bulbs or higher to have appropriate lighting with our eyes as we age. In the bathroom, we find different considerations. Yeah, so when I, my first thought as I walk into this bathroom are going to be the rugs on the floor. So thinking about the test where you kind of put your foot right on here and move it, 
this rug, as you can see, doesn't move. So this is actually a fairly safe rug. Rugs in general can pose a trip or slip hazard, but they can be very important and useful in areas that become wet and slippery, like the bathroom or near the kitchen sink. Just make sure the rubber backing is good. Now, in the bathroom, tubs and showers are naturally slippery, so in addition to installing an anti-skid surface, grab bars are important. This is set up very nicely with a grab bar here that the person could grab in different ways, and then on this wall. And By the numbers, like the bedroom is where most falls yeah, in the home absolutely. occur. So in the bedroom, one of the, the key recommendations is either having a lamp near the bed that's reachable mm -hmm. so that you can turn on the light, or potentially something like a clapper, and those are pretty reasonable uh, cost. And here's a great idea that more older people are adopting. Certainly some of the smart home capabilities now, if that is something people are interested in, have tons more options. You can control everything from a seated or supine position. And I like the idea of the smart home. Honestly, the smart home idea is something I had never really thought of. And one final thought for the bedroom, pay attention to your path to the bathroom. You want to make sure that it's clear of clutter before you go to bed at night because during the night when you're tired and groggy you don't want to be worried about stepping over things that maybe aren't well lit. Stairs are another fall hazard. Here are two specific tips. If your stairwell will allow for it, to have a railing on both sides. And? Um, you want to make sure at both the top and the bottom of the stairs you have a way to turn on a light. Finishing up our tour in the kitchen is some advice that can apply anywhere in the house. Step stools are something people sometimes will like to use in a kitchen to get nice and high in a cupboard or something off the top of a shelf. And that really isn't the safest choice. But if a step stool is a must, the recommendation is no more than one step and it's to have a rail in front of you or on side that you could hold on to. You know, one of the things that I had uh, talked to Sarah about during the story was actually the use of smart homes uh, or smart home devices to really help older people turn on lights and automate their home. And she had, and I thought that was a great idea. And unfortunately it didn't make it into the story because of time. But the point was, my initial thought was, well, are older people going to adopt smart home technologies? But she actually pointed out that during COVID, many older people very quickly adopted smart home ideas. And for example, you know, the purchase of an Alexa or Google Home or whatever mm -hmm. became very common. And so, you know, plugging in a light and being able to say, hey, turn on my light or in the story. When you get up in the middle right, of the night. Perfect. Exactly. Turning on lights, doing simple automated tasks remotely decreases your risk of a fall because basically you don't have to get up and do them. Yeah, when I also think about risk, we're thinking about our vision, which can mm -hmm. change and, and our balance. That's exactly right. And that's ultimately, you know, the next part of this is testing how likely you are to fall. And so I'm gonna mm -hmm. go through a couple of tests with you. We're gonna you. test, that, we're gonna- Yeah, make, we're gonna use you. Right, um, this is gonna be good. <laughs> and, I, you know, and I think the, the key about this is, these are tests to help identify when you are at an increased risk of falling. This does not mean you are not going to fall because right. unfortunately falls are completely accidental, but this is a sign, or failing these tests or not doing well on these tests is a sign that you are losing your ability to balance. You're losing your strength, you're losing mobility. And those are all indicators that you're at an increased risk for fall. So we're gonna start with what's okay. called the single land, single stance leg mm -hmm. test. Okay. And so this is, and you're in heels of this course. This is a bad idea for me. So, I picked the wrong day to wear heels. <laughs> <laughs> right, and I will point out, there is no requirement to wear heels for this test. Or you so, do the balance um, test. In fact, okay. I would almost suggest you not wear heels, but uh -oh. Christy is going to be brave and do this. So the whole idea here is you stand on one leg okay. and you balance for 10 seconds on one leg, whichever leg is more comfortable for you. And I and can't if you hang can on to you. Balance, right, and you can't hang on. And some people say you should have your hands at your side. Some people say your arms out. It doesn't really matter. Whichever you're more comfortable. But if you can stand for 10 seconds, as it. she has well- I think I did it. In well heels. more than proven in heels, that shows that you have good enough balance that you are at a lower risk of falling. Again, okay. doesn't mean- Mine doesn't mean zero fall. risk, right. exactly. But if you did fall or if you had instability, Sometimes it's because you have, let's say, a bad knee, for mm -hmm. example. But if you have true trouble with your balance, that would be an indicator that, for example, you might need an assistive device when you're walking, or it might mean that when you stand up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, you should spend a little more time settling yourself and have handholds as you're going around your own home mm -hmm. even. 
So that would be where the single leg stance test comes in. So the okay. next test is something called the timed up and go test. Tug is what it stands, tug for short. And okay. the way this works is we're gonna have you sit down. Okay. So we'll start there. You're gonna walk, you're gonna stand up on your own, walk 10 feet, so that's about there. Okay. And you're gonna Hans turn around got us here. and you're gonna go right back. Right. And you're just going to, at a normal pace, there's no right. rush to it at all. And then you just sit right back down. For a normal person with good mobility, good strength and good balance, that should take about 12 to 14 seconds at most. If you can do it under 10, that's totally normal. But if you are at 12 seconds, that's really kind of beginning to push the limits. And that really suggests that you have difficulty with your strength and mobility more than anything, but a little bit of balance. And the key there is if you don't do well on the tug test, that also suggests that you might need more work with exercise, more work with your posture, more work with core strength, as well as your balance. And these again are indicators that you are at a higher risk ultimately. So when we think about how do we start to improve what kind of exercises or what kind of classes or programs there are out there, we can help improve ourselves a little bit. Definitely, and I think that really kind of plays into the next story. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially an exercise class to help seniors develop better mobility and better strength. All right, swing your arms. It's called exercise with Amanda. And up to the ceiling. And Amanda means business. And left, four. Amanda Farner three, is certified in many forms two, of fitness, but she one, especially right enjoys right, teaching go. seniors. I try and do a little bit of literally everything. Her class meets three times a week at the Auburn Hills Community Center. Punch with your right hands. There are a few standard rules. We don't jump, we don't get on the floor. And we try not to have their head below their heart, just for like blood pressure reasons. Chairs are available for balance or sitting if needed, but this is a real workout. Amanda says many of her students were uncertain at first. As the weeks go on, they suddenly realized that they can be coordinated and strong and flexible. The class helped 72-year-old Adele Paxson recover from a frightening fall. I was at my daughter's house in her kitchen and I stumbled on a wooden structure that my grandson stands on to do dishes. I was falling towards a table, a thick glass table. So it was either my head or my arm stretching out to stop the fall which that's what I did. I put my right arm out, and when I fell down, I fractured my shoulder. After physical therapy, her doctor recommended she join an exercise class. I signed up for this class, and it's been amazing. I can just tell a world of difference, and I don't get teased by my sisters anymore that I have no upper body strength. 83-year-old Pat Fisher joined to help prevent a fall. I was diagnosed with um, osteoporosis. And one of the things that they always caution you about is falling. She enjoys the class and the camaraderie. Being able to participate with others, it's encouraging. And uh, I highly recommend being involved in some type of exercise program. It's wonderful for the endorphins. It, it's amazing how good you feel when you finish this class. Many of the exercises are designed to reduce the risk of falling. The stronger that you are, maybe the more agile you are and flexible, you have a better chance of catching yourself if you have like a little trip. You know, some of this little dancing and stuff we're doing, that's a couple of fast steps this way or that way. Another benefit? Less chance of being hurt if you do fall, because we all sometimes just fall, right? You don't have to be a senior to do that. Um, so your body is more prepared, flexible, to maybe fall in a funny position and not get a really serious injury. Amanda says the old adage is true. Use it or lose it. It's never too late to start, but also start as soon as you can. And, and don't ever stop moving. And they often say, I wish I'd started this 20 years ago, 40 years ago. So just to keep moving as much as you can, as often as you can, I think that's super important. So even if you've had your home surveyed and you've eliminated hazards as much as possible, and even if you can do the stand-up test and you can walk 10 feet without any difficulty, and even if you've exercised with Amanda, there is still a chance that you might fall. So I am gonna take you inside of my home to show you really kind of the best way to fall if all else fails and you end up going down. 
in many circumstances, a fall happens so suddenly that you don't really have the presence of mind to make purposeful movements. You're going to rely on reflex and muscle memory. And that's why knowing the hazards of falling incorrectly can be helpful. It can hopefully give you a chance to change your reflex movements. Now, one of the first things that people naturally do is extend their arms to try and catch the impact. Unfortunately, that's not really helpful because your arms aren't usually going to be strong enough to absorb the impact effectively. In fact, when all of your weight is suddenly directed through your wrist and arms, it often leads to fractures. So if possible, avoid putting out your arms. The most important thing to protect are actually your head and neck. If you're going to do anything with your arms, use them to protect your noggin. Now, when you fall, whatever part of your body hits the ground is going to absorb the force. So if you can get the fleshiest part of your body to hit first and lower your center of gravity into a roll, you can reduce the damage since the force is going to be spread over more of your body. Practically speaking, that means rolling onto your buttock or thigh as much as possible. Falls can be dangerous, even deadly. Avoiding them can be a real balancing act. All right, so I can't imagine that was done on one take. No, no, in fact, that's why I had the mat out, because I, I knew that it was going to take practice falling properly, and I knew that, of course, our photographer would want to see it over and over again. Right. So yeah, after the day after, I was quite sore, and actually my elbow and, both, and my hip were both uh, a little inflamed. Let's there you say. go, doing your duty. Sarah, what's been the reaction to, to these stories and, and what have viewers been saying? Well, everyone wants to exercise with Amanda because okay. she's so cool <laughs> yeah. and her class was so much fun. It was painful not to participate when we were there shooting it. Yeah. Um, but everyone is really surprised at how common falls are. Right. Um, they just didn't realize. Um, and they are also surprised at how many things they're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. One perfect example is handrails. So I've been looking very closely since doing this series, and most of us do not hold on to handrails. Yeah. Even my own mother, I'm walking up the stairs behind her at church, 81 years old, she's not holding the handrail. But that is something simple that we can all do that will reduce our risk of falling. It's what turns a simple stumble into just a stumble instead of a dangerous fall. Yeah, we have actually a staircase here at Local 4 that I will not let go of the handrailing on coming down. Um, so I guess any final thoughts for us um, so we don't end up seeing you in the ER? We just want to yeah. see you on television, not actually in the ER. Well, you know, I think actually it really does go to some of the simple things that Sarah just identified, and that's that, you know, it's, it's common, simple things that you do using a handrail, uh, making sure that you're paying attention, that you have some situational awareness. I mean, if you're walking on a slippery area, you should walk more carefully. And it's amazing how often young or old people just aren't paying attention to what they're doing, or they choose what I call um, insensible or unsensible footwear. I mean, it's just stuff I mean, like I that. I mean, present company included. Well, <laughs> But, you know, I mean, yeah. it's it's simple things like that. Um, it, you know, falling is it's an accident. I mean, yeah. none of us fall on purpose, with the exception of my one story on how to fall. But the point is, they are accidents and we can decrease the likelihood of these accidents by engaging in, I guess, what I would call self-protective behaviors, being more thoughtful about the way we walk, about the way we hold on to things, about turning on lights. I mean, the perfect example in my own life is that I walked the same route to get a glass of water in the middle of the night over and over until my wife left the dishwasher open mm -hmm. to dry the dishes out, and I didn't turn on the lights and went right into the dishwasher and tore, you know, took out my knee when mm. I went down in the dishwasher. And that's because I was too lazy to turn on the lights. That's what it was. As simple as that. Yeah. It's so much good information. Thanks so much, Dr. McGeorge, and of course, our senior medical producer, Sarah Mayberry, for being with us and just kind of going a little bit more in depth. It's uh, a balancing act, a closer look. We so appreciate it. Thanks for joining us right here on Local 4 Plus. I'm Christy McDonald. We'll see you next time.